But first of all, I want to thank you all for coming and joining us in this press conference today. We have so much happening in the world, including in our United States of America. And of course, now that we hear the governor is calling the special election, I wanted to bring everyone's attention to this very important issue. And first of all, I want to announce myself. I'm Paulette Jordan. For those who don't know me, I'm a candidate for U.S. Senate, born and raised Idahoan, mother of two beautiful boys. And of course, because I was born and raised here in Idaho, I certainly carry the tradition and the heritage of Idaho uh, in my spirit and in my heart. And so I'm very privileged to be here and honored to be uh, elected as the Democratic nominee to represent our great state. I will tell you that uh, as I've been going all along the state, I've been meeting with great leaders, and it has come to my attention uh, what is happening. Uh, and the fact that voter suppression really is atop, at the top of my ticket, looking at what is a, a concern for many of us who are now be being faced with the challenges with our U.S. Postal Service. Uh, the President announced today that he's not going to be funding the U.S. Postal Service. For a lot of folks who are paying attention to this issue, I implore that you impress upon your local leadership to manage this issue very carefully and with utmost transparency. Uh, whether or not the governor decides to uh, exchange uh, conversations about elaborating on uh, expanding uh, access to the polls or expanding access to people to mail in their ballots, I would hope that during this special session our elected leaders uh, would hear our people and demanding that we and not only uh, open up our roles to um, ensure that everyone has access to vote, uh, but me keeping those in mind, especially in rural parts of our state, uh, from places that I stem from. Because we have uh, challenges with rural broadband access in our state, you know, not everyone can go online to request their ballot. Uh, and if we have issues with the U.S. Postal Service, we've got to keep in mind those who are requesting their ballot by mail. And I know that in this day and age, transparency is everything. Uh, so we need leadership to protect the votes, protect the voter rights, and ensure that not only our veterans are having access to vote, but everyone in our rural areas, our Hispanic community, our indigenous populations, uh, and every single young person who is turning 18 and has that right to vote is protected. And I will remind them that, in fact, if you do not vote, you are letting others vote for you and speak for you. That is not the way we want our future to be, is relying on the corporations and others who are uh, suppressing our vote to be uh, those who are deciding our outcomes in our children's future. So I want to also remind folks, you know, where is our representation? You know, I ran for a reason. People called upon me to be their leader and representative because they saw someone who was asleep on the job. And the fact that this man is not doing his job and is not actively promoting the voice of the people, that recalls for me the very reason why I'm running, which is the fact that we need leadership in our state. In fact, our young people are walking the streets demanding accountability, demanding leadership. And that is what we are here to stand for and what we represent. We want all people to, to take part in our electoral process come November 3rd. Uh, and hopefully people will go to their county offices to vote early. Uh, and hopefully during this special session, our governor and our elected leaders will not take that right from our Idaho citizens. Uh, and I am standing here firmly to ensure that. But again, we have folks who are, uh, like me, a working mother, uh, relying upon COVID relief funding. And we have yet to see a Republican U.S. Senate body that has supported any sort of COVID relief for working families in our state, or even the rural families in our state uh, who are uh, relying upon this COVID relief, which uh, you know, at the end of July, uh, they're seeing uh, the fact that this is going to be ending. So these tax dollars, you know, they need to come back to our, our people. Uh, and I'm bit very, very, very much concerned about the fact that we have folks who are uh, facing evictions, who are suffering because they're not able to put food on the table. Uh, these are all good people, good relatives and friends that we know. Uh, we want to make sure that we're looking out for them. And in fact, that we have a representative who should be looking out for them, but is not speaking on their behalf. So these are major concerns that I have, and I want to challenge again everyone to uh, take, a, uh, take part in this race, uh, because we not only have the presidential race going on. We have many Senate seats that are up. And of course, we have a representative that has been in this office for far too long. 44 years this man has been here. 44 years is too long for anyone to be in public office. For those of us who see that uh, someone who's been in office for 11 years in this U.S. Senate seat and has nothing to show for it and has zero legacy to stand on, we deserve better. And I'm taking this time for my family and my community and my people to ensure that we have accountability and transparency in public office. 
I stem from an indigenous heritage that does not stand on partisanship. We are independent by nature. We are independent by heritage and because of our culture. This is what I come to all of you with, a very independent-minded, uh, sovereign-based uh, vision and principled uh, individual. So the leadership that I offer to Idaho citizens are basically the leadership that we all deserve. You know, everyone deserves access to their leadership. Everyone deserves accountability and the promotion of equal justice for all. Now that I stand for these issues and I want people to know that me as a businesswoman, uh, having already developed these relationships, both locally, statewide, and nationally, uh, already having worked at the federal level, uh, people understand that I know how important it is to develop positive relationships. And they also know how important it is for us to work together from both sides of the aisle, be it Democrats or Republicans. And because I operate from this nonpartisan position, being an independent that I am, I am very proud to stand here as a daughter of Idaho and a lifelong committed leader to represent all of you. Now I'm here to ensure that your rights are protected. I call upon the governor and those who are be here during the special session, our elected representatives, to hear the voices of the people. So please reach out to your representatives and let them know that you want those rights maintained and protected. Call your Secretary of State and have him check those roles to ensure that you have not been purged because we have veterans who've contact, contacted me and have said we have been purged from the voting rolls. And this is not a four-year period that they've been purged from. They were purged, purged as, of, as of last year. So the fact that they have voted and they are veterans who served our country and have been purged for these voting rolls within a year says a great deal about the disenfranchisement and the fact that our people have been disillusioned to think that they have these freedoms and rights in our states. And the state of Idaho has not served the best of our people who have served this country if their rights to vote have been taken from them. And the fact that they would have to drive 20 miles or even hours away to re-register to vote, that cannot happen in a state like ours. And that is how serious I take each and every individual's rights to participate in our government. And if we want our young people to participate, then we have to walk our talk and ensure that they are protected and that we are going to listen to them because they are the future. And if we truly care about the future, we're going to stand up for it and we dig well are going to fight for our dear lives for that right. So I thank you all for coming here, standing here, taking this time, and I'm open for questions uh, as I want to make sure that our people have uh, every answer uh, that they need. Thank you. You've talked a lot about nonpartisanship and bringing, sort of bringing people to the negotiation table, as I understand it. How would you um, act differently than Senator Rich has in bringing people to the negotiation you know, because of COVID, we, we try to be very respectful uh, because we want to protect our elders, our children, and people all together. Uh, I also want to make sure that people understand that with my leadership, everyone has a seat at the table. Uh, I, they've seen that with my voting record here in the state capitol. Uh, many folks who you can call upon who I've worked with will say that, you know, we don't see her as uh, being a Democrat or a Republican or anything. Uh, we see her as being a true voice of the people. I think that's very important to have that record and relationship uh, because when people look at you, they want to know that you're not going to be beholden to party politics or uh, spitting the party rhetoric that's unnecessary in today's day and age. Uh, I come from a heritage that is led by example. Uh, we actually walk our talk. We are a community or culture that's based on verb, which is taking action. Uh, we're not about the old way, which is just based on nouns and uh, you know, spitting empty promises. So because of this difference, we're bringing people to the table. We're creating coalitions uh, based on uh, veterans, health care, education. Uh, we had a great conversation with our teachers yesterday uh, talking about ways to join uh, our educators, bringing them to the table so that their voices are heard, most importantly, that they can tell their stories and then we can take those stories to the halls of Congress, ensuring our Idaho citizens uh, have access to the resources that they need so that we can improve our education system in our state. Now, all of that is imperative for us to be mindful of uh, because of the fact that we are suppressing the votes are suppressing even the voices of our people is despicable and it complicates uh, the, the fact that we have a broken system uh, and we're not going to fix it if we don't continue to if we don't address these issues with our people first uh, but again that comes by being open and transparent having meetings and conversations with people uh, not avoiding Idaho like our current representative does uh, he hasn't visited our state in years uh, the fact that he's running scared and has 
come to the state of Idaho for the first time in 11 years uh, to try to indicate that he's doing something for our, our Idaho's public uh, is, in fact, uh, I would say laughable. But uh, we have a serious race here because this is the most serious uh, election that we've ever have uh, come to in our nation's history. This is one of the greatest crossroads that people will be a part of uh, in electing the citizenship or the rightful leaders that we need. And I will tell you that you asked a question about uh, why it's different. Because I'm indigenous, we've never seen a voice like mine uh, in the halls of the U.S. Senate. I will be, in fact, the first Native American woman elected to the U.S. Senate. But more importantly, the legacy of leadership that I stem from being uh, chiefs of uh, the Northwest, these chiefs have emboldened uh, the very facts that are basis of uh, and the principal values of being independent and upholding freedoms and equality for all. Uh, those are the same uh, basic principles that I stand on. So I want to make sure that everyone that we uh, tend to suppress in this state are heard from, from our Hispanic community to our indigenous community, to our veterans, our young people, our union labor workers, our uh, uh, teachers, uh, making sure again that no voice is left out, uh, especially our LGBTQ community. Uh, we have far too many people who are disengaged and disenfranchised, but those folks I want to make sure uh, have a right and opportunity to help us uh, position our policy uh, just so that everyone uh, is included in our future uh, future laws. Oh, yes, yes, Elvis. Uh, yes, my name is Elvis, and um, our media is a Red Pro Media. I'm here to represent our, our African community. Yes. So I have a question that I will have A, B, and C. So uh, my first question I would like to ask you uh, your relationship with the Af uh, refugee. Uh, what do you plan to with the, with your relationship with them? And uh, the second question will be: um, How are you gonna help people who they don't know how to vote? Especially like uh, in my community, some of them they don't know how to vote because they uh, don't speak English. You know. So what are you planning to help them? so they can know how to vote because it's their right. And then the last question is, uh, the housing right now is going very high in the price. The renting, people are suffering a lot. So what can you promise us? Because right now life is very, very hard in uh, not only African community, but, but uh, every, everybody. That is the same, the same kind of song that everybody's singing. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Elvis. And you know, I will start by saying this. You know, I never make any promises, I make commitments. And my commitment is always going to be to serve the people and their best interest. Uh, I was raised to put other people's best interests before even my own. And in this case, you know, I've heard uh, the refugee community several times. We've had uh, multiple town halls. And thanks to you and your leadership of the community, because you've always brought the voices of your people to the forefront. When we talked about uh, the refugees, and I, I try to be mindful of all of the folks that I talk with that uh, try to discriminate upon the refugee community, I will say that Everyone is a refugee at one point in time in this country, uh, other than our indigenous relatives who've been here since time immemorial. Uh, and I stem from that heritage, and they've never once discriminated against refugees coming into this land. Uh, but everyone has that right uh, to be free and to have access to prosperity. And because we want everyone to be free and have access to prosperity and to live an independent life and to have uh, both economic sovereignty and body sovereignty, we are uh, going to protect those rights. And my grandfathers had this great vision, and they've implemented that vision through me. So Alice, between you and I, this uh, relationship that we have is very special to me. Running for office is a, a sacred right and ability that we have, and I'm enacting that sacred right and ability uh, because I'm uh, privileged to be in this position to represent you. Uh, so my commitment is to represent our refugee community as well, and while we have uh, really walked our talk through our campaign since our last conversation, uh, we've expanded our field team. Uh, we have more members of our field team because they understand how important it is to get every single Idahoan registered to vote. Uh, even those folks who have been uh, disenfranchised that we talked about before because we want to make sure that uh, even the language barrier is not a barrier for their rights to, to participate in our electoral process in the state. So we're going to make sure that we are communicating with everyone uh, from everyone in your community to those across the state who have uh, similarly expressed uh, the same concerns uh, because we want to address every single concern uh, and that's why we have our team that's on staff and really on hand, and they're going to be doing more. Uh, and I think that's going to be the, the real challenge is how can we get to everybody, even during the time of COVID. Uh, it's not as easy to do because we do want to be respectful to people's health and uh, protect people uh, in their isolation. 
So the best way we can do this is really operate with you in partnership uh, and those who are willing to act and serve in this regard and then educate them all along the way. And if we have any changes with the special election, we will see, but we want to make sure that we roll as quickly to respond uh, to those changes. But ensuring that people maintain that right to be able to vote early at the courthouse will be essential. Uh, maintaining the right to vote by mail is going to be essential and people have access to the technology or even just the, to be able to mail in you know, their uh, request for a ballot uh, will be essential. So we will continue to work with you, Elvis, and, and uh, to the last question I remember uh, with housing. Uh, housing is certainly a great issue for all of us in our state. Uh, it's going to come down to you know, the economic access that we have. Uh, and because I called upon Rish to do his job uh, in the United States uh, halls, I wanted to ensure that people understand that we have an elected representative who has disserved our people by saying that we are getting too much money in the first place. Saying $600 is too much uh, for Idaho citizens, that's, that's unheard of. That's despicable. Uh, to say that our people are not suffering or that our people are not going homeless so that they can uh, afford to put food on the table when we see our food banks uh, basically uh, on empty. You know, and people are, are uh, struggling left and right no matter where you look, and it's not discriminatory upon party. Uh, be fat, be, whether you're Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you are economically hit, you're, you're going to be hit hard. So we need to make sure that we have representation that is going to ensure that our people uh, have access to resources, even during the time of COVID even if that means 2000 a month or whatever that looks like. Uh, and I'm sure that people are recovered in that un unemployment line because we have over 30 million people right now in unemployment lines. Uh, and so we just want to make sure that we address that fact first. Uh, and I want to make sure that people are not evicted from their homes. And that's going to be a relationship that we must continue to build uh, with our local city councils, uh, along with our governor and our local representatives. Uh, so I hear you and I, I certainly understand the concerns. And uh, that is an issue that I want to address. Uh, but that address uh, issue can be ha or that the issue can be addressed uh, in Congress if we were just to do our, do our job and put politics aside, uh, because we have a CARES Act that sits before us that uh, is still being funded, but that funding is running out. Uh, people must pay attention to what's happening right now with the gridlock in Washington D.C. Because in that gridlock, you have the Heroes Act versus the Heels Act, and that's a two trillion dollar difference. But the Heroes Act would actually serve Idaho citizens. Uh, and our tribes within, but yet they are promoting the HEALS Act, which only serves their best friends, those in the corporate division, and we're done with that. This is why I promote a new generation of leadership that is about the people first, uh, and unfortunately we're having to deal with this politics in this time of COVID during this pandemic, uh, but we can do better, and that's why I'm uh, excited about November 3rd, because come November, uh, this is where the people have a chance to vote on uh, real leadership that will speak for them. Uh, and bring these opportunities to enhance uh, areas of economic opportunity and economic sovereignty uh, that everyone rightfully deserves. Thank you. Well, great questions, guys. Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Oh, go ahead, Elvis. I will just have, if we're done with the question, I will just have a request. Um, I have a 30, 30 second. Yes. I would like to request 30 seconds to sing for you. Okay. That's all. Yes. If you will, you will, you will allow me. Thank you for honoring me, sir. Okay. So can I come over there? And, uh, yes. Okay. So, this is the thing, okay? Can you guys please, just uh, when I sing and you guys reply, Oh, Polete. Right? Okay. One. Two, three. She's there for you. She's there for us. She's there for you. She's there for us. Oh, Polly. She can make some change. Oh, Polly. She's there for you. She's there for us. Oh, Polly. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was so beautiful. Thank you for honoring us with that song, uh, and that's a, a great right way to end a uh, press conference. So thank you all, my family, I love you. Uh, please get out, and if you can call your relatives, remind them that we have this uh, special uh, session coming up. Uh, everyone needs to stay vigilant in this process to maintain transparency uh, amongst our local elected officials. Yes, sir. Do you have time for one more question? Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have any specific legislation in mind that you'd like to see to uh, 
Well, that's a great question because we have so much to work on in our state. The fact that we can early vote is great, and, and I hope everyone takes um, a, you know takes advantage of that. Uh, but I would love to see uh, a couple things first: automatic registration for those who turn 18. You know that would be wonderful. Uh, and of course, our young people they would, and especially folks who may live in uh, very economically suppressed communities where you have multiple families living in uh, the same home. Uh, if that happened, that would actually help our young people, and I think ignite them to vote. Uh, I would say that if we had a, a national uh, day uh, that turned into a holiday so that working families can turn out to vote on election day. Uh, that would be amazing because we are uh, one of the states that actually offers same day registration so they can actually turn out uh, on the same day and vote whether at the county courthouse or at their local ballot office, uh, ballot box. Uh, and then I would say, you know, number two, uh, because uh, automatic registration would really be helpful uh, if we were able to vote by mail uh, and that, that would be automatic for those who are registered. Because if we did not have to go through these multiple steps to go online and you know, fill out the forms and then wait for that uh, return to come through the mail, I think uh, because of these multiple steps right now to vote by mail uh, or by absentee ballot, uh, that tends to create a deterrence for some folks. If it were automatic and people just received their ballot in the mail like many states across this country, I think that would really increase the participation rate in our state. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.